What's up everybody, Sean here and thank you for joining me. 2021 has been a stellar year for Apple product launches in my opinion. New releases ranging from iPhones to iPads to MacBooks and even to AirPods, it's been one of the most exciting years for Apple releases in recent memory. Especially so for the M1 chip, which was already a game changer when it came out at the end of 2020, Apple continued to strengthen their lineup in 2021 with the 24-inch M1 iMac and the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips in the new 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pros. Then we have that M1 iPad Pro. Let's talk about that. For those of you who want the answer immediately, long story short, yes, the M1 iPad Pro is the most disappointing Apple release of 2021 to me, and here's why. I've had an iPad ever since the first one was launched in 2010 to much controversy. I've had several others along the way, some I bought myself while others were generously gifted to me. I started using the early ones purely out of curiosity and then got the later ones for productivity. So I've definitely been on the ride with Apple's peddling of the idea that iPads will one day replace the PC and the Mac for the average user. And to be fair, we're not very far off that becoming a reality for a large number of people. Then comes the iPad Pro. As a consumption device, it's not hard to argue that iPads are in fact better at it than PCs and Macs, but it gets tricky when it comes to professional use. When the first iPad mini was launched, I was very attracted to how the battery life and portability will fit into my job at the time, and I went out and got it. I pretty much brought it everywhere with me and it was an absolute champ and a true companion. But even though it did last all day, and mind you this was in a time where laptops lasted 4-5 to five hours just on idle, the OS was never quite powerful enough to truly replace my laptop. And then we got the first iPad Pro. Equipped with that keyboard folio, Apple Pencil and the speedy A9X chip, this was in 2016 of course. It gave the promise of doing away with my 2012 13-inch classic MacBook Pro once all those Pro apps on the iPad got up to speed, right? No. Nothing really changed apart from a more convenient keyboard and the ability to sign and draw stuff. And don't get me wrong, these were excellent hardware innovations, well apart from that Apple Pencil charging solution thing. But I digress. However, it was still the same underlying iOS with a tedious file management system and not very reliable cloud syncing. Although it certainly did help a lot for the times when I wasn't able to or willing to lug around my 2012 MacBook Pro, it never really achieved the level of productivity that I could have with my MacBook. And after being generously gifted a 13-inch 2017 MacBook Pro, yes that one, I finally put my attempts to go iPad only to rest. So imagine my excitement when Tim Cook teased the M1 chip in the new iPad Pro, literally out of nowhere. It certainly took me by surprise and I was ecstatic. The prospect of actually being able to run Mac apps like Final Cut Pro on an iPad was finally here and I told everyone to expect it at WWDC 2021. We all know how that went. Apple gave us nothing and today we still have the same iPad OS as before. Yes, it has a bit more customization to the home screen and widgets and some other frankly forgettable stuff, but it still runs perfectly well on literally every other iPad that does not have an M1 chip in it. So there was literally no improvement to the underlying ability of an iPad to truly and completely replace a MacBook or a laptop and especially not one that takes advantage of that M1 chip. Although I also suspect that's actually what they really wanted given how successful the M1 Max actually proved to be. But what about that legendary M1 battery life? I mean, if the MacBook Pro can last 20 hours, surely the battery life of the iPad Pro should be phenomenal, right? No. In fact, it only gets the same 10 hours as before or just half of what the MacBook Pro can get. Now it's probably down to the size of the battery and that XDR display and I can totally understand that. But when a MacBook has better battery life than an iPad, you really have to stop and think for a moment. And this only gets worse when you realize that both M1 MacBooks actually come out cheaper than the 12.9 inch 
M1 iPad Pro with a Magic Keyboard and I'm not even including the Apple Pencil yet. You really have to dig deep to find a value proposition for the M1 iPad Pro over literally every other iPad. I couldn't. I've since gotten my 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro and I've never looked back. The prospect of an iPad-only life has been a roller coaster to say the least and left me utterly disappointed with the 2021 M1 iPad Pro. While the idea itself is brilliant, the execution of it has been dismal and that is why it is the most disappointing Apple product of 2021 for me. But maybe we'll get it in 2022. Well, that wraps things up for today. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please hit that like and subscribe button down below and I will see you in the next video.